the greatest world empire during that period of time. Great military with chariots, and you had horses and riders and officers and all of that, and sitting atop all of that was Pharaoh, the great Pharaoh of Egypt, and he was considered during that period of time to be the incarnation of the God Horus. So he's deity to his people. On one side of the coin, you have great Egypt with great Pharaoh with a great army and chariots and officers and horses and riders. And then on the other side of the coin, you have a group of slaves with their flocks and herds. And here comes their spokesman, Moses and Aaron, and Moses has a staff in his hand. Now, which side would you choose? One side of the coin, you have Egypt. The other side of the coin, you have these slaves with their hot flocks and herds, and a guy with a staff in his hand. Who comes to Pharaoh and says, God says, let my people go. <clears throat> From a human perspective, who would you side with? Aren't you glad that we don't have to rely on human reasoning? And aren't you glad that we don't have to rely on human perspectives? Because the great Pharaoh of Egypt, the mighty host of Egypt, and all the gods of Egypt could not stand in the way of God's deliverance. When God was giving his final instructions to his people about leaving the land of Egypt, he said in Exodus 12, in verse 12, that I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and on all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The very gods, the very gods which the Egyptians looked to were powerless. They were powerless to save the Egyptians, and they were certainly powerless before God. From a human perspective, we're thinking of all the obstacles that stand in the way. How are you going to get these slaves out of the most powerful nation that the world has seen to that day? How are you going to do this? All of the obstacles. They've got a great military. They're a mighty empire. Their Pharaoh is God. And they have all these powerful gods. God says, no. No obstacle will stand in the way. We need to remember that when God delivers. No obstacle will stand in the way. And then let's consider this point that when God delivers, it's good for his people to remember that. It's good for his people to remember that God delivers and then to respond appropriately. Just a moment ago, we made reference to instructions that God gave to his people shortly before they were to leave, to leave the land of Egypt. Those instructions are found in Exodus chapter 12. The instructions that he gives to them are instructions concerning the Passover. That powerful observance where God's deliverance would be remembered by his people. A male lamb, a year old, without blemish would be eaten on the 14th day of the first month. It would be eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is what God said about it in Exodus 12, beginning in verse 14. This day shall be for you a memorial day, and you shall keep it as a feast day to the Lord. Throughout your generations, as a statute forever, you shall keep it as a feast. What did God intend? God intended for his people to remember this occasion. He wanted them to remember that he had passed over them, that he had delivered them out of Egyptian bondage. And think about the joy, and think about the worship, and think about the benefit of that yearly remembrance that God had delivered them. In fact, here's what God will do. God will give them a sneak peek of their lives in the land of Canaan after their deliverance. Still in Exodus chapter 12, God is giving them a sneak peek that when you're in the land, your children may ask a question. This is Exodus 12 and verse 26. When you come to the land that the Lord will give to you, as he has promised, you shall keep this service. And when your children say to you, 
What do you mean by the service? You shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. For he passed over the houses of the people of Israel and Egypt when he struck the Egyptians, but spared our houses. What was the response of the people? When they learned about this feast that they were going to take part in year by year to remember the Lord's deliverance. And when God said, when you're in the land, you're going to keep this feast. What was the response? Exodus 12, verse 27 says that the people bowed their heads and worshipped. They bowed their heads and worshipped. When God delivers, it's good for people to remember that and then to respond appropriately. Let's think about our points this evening. The deliverance of the Israelites from Egyptian bondage in the book of Exodus was not God's final Deliverance plan. It's not the only time we read about God delivering his people. Because when we come to the pages of the New Testament, we read about a greater deliverance, don't we? This is what Paul wrote in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. That God has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his Son... In whom we have redemption and the forgiveness of our sins. Let's consider the observations we made about God's deliverance of the Israelites in light of the deliverance that God provides in Christ. We said that when God delivers, he does so for a reason. When God delivered the people of Israel, he did so because of his covenant, the covenant he made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He did so to show everybody that he's the Lord. The same is true today. When God delivers, he does so for a reason. He delivers us from sin and darkness. And he does so so that we can have redemption and the forgiveness of sins. When God delivers, he does so for a reason. And we said a moment ago that when God delivers, no obstacle stands in the way. When you think about the deliverance that we have in Christ, did anything stand in the way of that happening? His plan was carried out. All of the devil's efforts to stop our redemption failed miserably. You think about everything the devil tried to do to stop this plan from being carried out. From his efforts in the Old Testament period of time to his efforts that we read about in the New Testament, he failed miserably. No obstacle stood in the way of God. Redemption and the forgiveness of sins are available to all of those who will respond in faith and obedience. And we said just a moment ago that when God delivers, it's good for his people to remember that and then to respond in an appropriate way. Here you have the people of God, they're remembering that deliverance on a yearly basis. They're thinking about the Passover, they're thinking about being spared and being delivered. What is an appropriate response for us, having been delivered from that domain of darkness and, and then transferred into the kingdom of God's Son where we have redemption and forgiveness of sins? What is an appropriate response to all of that? And again, as we said this morning, we can think of many responses. But I want us to consider one response, Romans chapter 6 and verse 17. This is what Paul wrote. Romans 6, verse 17, but thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to that standard of teaching to which you were committed and having been set free from sin have become slaves of righteousness. Slaves of righteousness. Where did we begin this evening? We began with God's people being slaves in Egyptian bondage. And God delivered them. And they were to remember what God did for them. What better way for God's people today to remember our deliverance from sin than by becoming slaves to righteousness? That's an appropriate response. Waking up every day and asking ourselves the question or making the statement, you know, today I'm going to be a slave of righteousness. And 
that's how I'm going to respond to God's deliverance. That's how I'm going to respond to him taking me from the domain of darkness and then bringing me over here because of faith and obedience, bringing me over here to light, to the kingdom of his son, where there's redemption and where there's forgiveness of sin. This is how I'm going to remember, and this is how I'm going to respond. I'm going to be a slave to righteousness. God delivers. That's an extraordinary statement, isn't it? God delivers, and we can experience his deliverance today. We can experience his deliverance today with the knowledge that he has delivered again and again. That he does exactly what he says. When God delivers, he does so for a reason. When he delivers, no obstacle stands in the way. And when God delivers, it's good for his people to remember that and to respond appropriately. We want you to respond. And you can write that as we stand and as we sing for your